Hello, and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2022. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we are going to be coming, covering Nehemiah 4 through 6 and Acts 2, 22 through 47. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice and articulation so that the reading of your Word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, Amen. Opposition to the Rebuilding Nehemiah 4 When Sandblot heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, What are they building? Even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. Hear us, our God. We are despised. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. Do not cover up their guilt or blot out their sins from your sight, for they have thrown insults in the face of the builders. And so we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. But when Sambla, Tobiah, the Arabs, the Ammonites, and the people of Ashad heard that we repaired and that the repairs to Jerusalem's walls had gone ahead and that the ga gaps were being closed, they were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Meanwhile, the people in Judea said, The strength of the laborers is giving out, and there is so much rubble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also our enemies said, Before they know it, our, or see us, we will be right there among them and kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near them came, and they told us ten times over, Wherever you turn, they will attack us. And therefore I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people. Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, who is great and awesome, and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we were returned to the wall, each to our own work. Now, from that day, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judea who were building the walls. Now, those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon with the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked, but the men who sounded the trumpets stayed with me. Then I said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, The work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely spread out from each other along the wall. Wherever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there. Our God will fight for us. 
And so we continued to work with half the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. At that time I also said to the people, Have every man and his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so they can serve us as guards by night and as workers by day. Neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off our clothes each and each had his weapon even when he went for water. Nehemiah helps the poor. Nehemiah 5. Now the men and their wives raised a great outcry against their fellow Jews. Some were saying, We and our sons and daughters are numerous. In order for us to eat and stay alive, we must get grain. Others were saying, We are mortgaged. We are mortgaged. Our fields are vineyards and our homes to get grain during the famine. Still others were saying, We have had to borrow money to pay the king's taxes on our fields and vineyards. Although we are all the same flesh and blood as our fellow Jews, and though our children are as good as theirs, yet we have to subject our sons and daughters to slavery. Some of our daughters have already been enslaved, but we are powerless because our fields and our vineyards belong to others. When I heard their outcry and their charges, I was very angry. I pondered them in my mind and then accused the nobles and officials. I told them, you are charging your own people interests. So I called together a large meeting to deal with them and said, as far as possible, we have brought back our fellow Jews who were sold to the Gentiles. Now you are selling your own people only for them to be sold back to us. They kept quiet because they could find nothing to say. And so I continued with what you are doing is not right. Shouldn't you walk in their fear of our God to avoid the reproach of our Gentile enemies? And my brothers and my men are also lending the people money and grain. But let us stop charging interest. Give back to them immediately their fields, vineyards, olive groves, and houses, and also the interest you are charging them. One percent of the money, grain, new wine, and olive oil. We will give it back, they said, and we will not demand anything more from them. We will do as you say. Then I summoned the priests and made the nobles and the officials take an oath to do what they had promised. I also shook out the folds of my robe and said, In this way my God shakes out of their house and possessions anyone who does not keep this promise. Sorry, in this way, go to sleep. In this way, God shake out their houses and possessions to anyone who does not keep these promises. So may such a person be shaken out and emptied. And at this, the whole assembly said, Amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did as they had promised. Moreover, uh, from the twentieth year of King Artaxerxes, when I was appointed to be their governor in the land of 
in Judea until his 32nd year, 12 years. Neither I nor my brothers ate the food allotted to the governor, but the earlier governors, those preceding me, placed a heavy burden on the people and took 40 shekels of silver from them in addition to food and wine. Their assistance also lorded it over the people, but out of reference uh, for God, I did not act like this. Instead, I devoted my life to the work of on the wall. All my men were assembled there for the work. We did not acquire any land. Furthermore, a hundred and fifty Jews and officials ate at my table, as well as those who came to us from the surrounding nations. Each day, an ox, six choice sheep, and some poultry were prepared for me, and every ten days, an abundant supply of wine of all kinds. In spite of all this, I never demanded the food allotted to the governor, because the demands were heavy on the people. Remember me with favor, my God, for all I have done for these people. Further opposition to the rebuilding. Nehemiah 6. When word came to Zebulon, Tobiah, and Geshem, and Arab, and the rest of our enemies, that I had rebuilt the wall, and not a gap was left in it, though eh, up to the time I had not set the doors in the gates. Sambalot and Geshem sent me this message. Come, let us meet together in one of the villages on the plains, uh, plains of Ono. Uh, ono. Well, by, uh, but by, but they were scheming to harm me, and so I sent messengers to them by this reply. I am crying out, uh, carrying out a great project and cannot go down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and go down to you? Four times they sent me the same message, and each time I gave them the same answer. Then the fifth time, Sanblot sent his aid to me with the same message, and in his hand was an unsealed letter in which was written. It is reported among the nations, and Geshem says, It is true that you are the Jews. <laughs> you and the Jews are plotting to revolt, and therefore you are building the wall. Moreover, according to these reports, you are about to become their king, and have in even appointed prophets to make this proclamation about you in Jerusalem. There is a king in Judea now. This report will get back to the king, so come, let us meet together. I sent him this reply. Nothing like what you are saying is happening. You are just making it up out of your heads. They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work, and I will not be uh, able to complete it. But I prayed, and now strengthened, uh, new, now strengthened my hands. And one day I went to the house of Shemaiah, son of Delia, the son of Methbatiba, who uh, was shut in at his home. He said, Let us meet in the house of God inside the temple, and let us close the temple doors, because men are coming to kill you by night. They are coming to kill you. But I said, Should a man like me run away, or should someone like me go into the temple to save his life? I will not go. I realize that God has not sent him, but that he had prophesied against me. Tobin and Sanoblot had hired him. He had been hired to intimidate me so that I would commit a sin by doing this, and then they would give me a bad name to discredit me. Remember 
Toba and Sandlot, my, my God, because of what they have done. Remember also the prophet Nodaiah and how she and the rest of the prophets have been trying to intimidate me. So the wall was completed on the 12th, uh, 24th, 25th day of Yud in 52 days. Opposition to the completed wall. When all our enemies heard about this, all the surrounding nations were afraid and lost their self confidence, but uh, because they realized that this work had been done with the help of our God. Also, in those days, the nobles of Judea were sending many letters to Tobin, and replies from Tobin King uh, kept coming to them. For many in Judea were under oath to him, since he was son-in-law to Shechaniah, son of Ara, and his son Jehohanah had married the daughter of Meshulam, son of Berechai. Moreover, they kept reporting to me his good deeds, and then telling him what I said, and Tobiah sent letters to intimidate me. Okay, that was Nehemiah 4 through 6, and now we will be turning to Acts 2, 22. Acts 2, 22. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and for, uh, for knowledge. And you, with the help of a wicked man, uh, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life, and you will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I cannot tell you confidently I can, fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the p patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke to the resurrection of the Messiah that he was not abandoned to in the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he was received from the Father and promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. And when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accept his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. The Fellowship of the Believers They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold properties and possessions and gave to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. And that was uh, Acts 2, 22 through 42, which concludes the Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. Tomorrow we will be covering Nehemiah 7 through 9 and Acts 3. Father, I just thank you for your word, because without your word, I could not be your messenger of the word. So I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. All right, folks. Hey, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to the uh, Bible with Briscoe 2022 for today. I, Shenandoah Briscoe, have enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you, and so do I. So... Come back and see us tomorrow because, well, God willing, we'll be here. And we hope that you are.